Here's proof that prices have been falling for months now. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. Liz, it's really easy to be an armchair quarterback when you can analyze the market after the fact, but that's exactly what we're doing today. <laughs> At the end, we'll share specific manufacturer inventory levels to share where things are right now. Some people will say prices aren't coming down in my area, they're still high. Yet in this report, there's factual evidence of falling car prices. By the way, when people say that prices aren't falling in their area, they are talking about asking prices. Yeah. Now, who on God's green earth pays an asking price at a dealership? Dealers have had a habit for many years of asking for too much for their cars. The answer should be that nobody pays an asking price. What price a deal actually closes at ought to be quite different from asking price every single time. And most often it is, especially if the buyer is a viewer familiar with our channel. You see, friends? It pays to be a regular follower here. This headline by Automotive News states that for a fact, prices and vehicle value have fallen significantly over the last several months. It reads, more Americans are getting auto loans that exceed the worth of their cars. More specifically, used car loan to value ratios increased to 125 in the first three months of this year from 104 for the same period in 2021. A ratio of 125 means that the borrower's loan balance is sitting at 125% of the vehicle's actual cash value, and that's a financial disaster waiting to happen. It goes on to say more Americans are entering into auto loans that exceed the worth of their cars after vehicle values declined in the wake of dramatic increases during the pandemic, according to the study released last Tuesday by credit reporting firm TransUnion and market researcher J.D. Power. Now, a significant part of this decline actually took place last fall, and that decline prompted a buying frenzy here in the spring of 2023. Yes. The month of May, for example, was a record sales month on many levels. With so many car deals sitting at a 125 ratio, it clearly demonstrates that the cost of a car has fallen significantly since last summer, and everything we've been tracking supports that. This data simply shows that it's a fact, not an opinion or a simple trend projection. If you bought a vehicle last year, it is very likely that your car's value is less than your loan payoff amount is. Whether you were paying attention or not, the drop in prices happened right under your noses. Unfortunately, this report reveals an ugly and sad truth for those of you who ignored or failed to heed our advice to wait and you bought a car anyway. Now, perhaps you either had to buy a car or you convinced yourself that you had to buy. The loan to value ratios or LTVs you are seeing now could also be foreshadowing higher delinquency rates ahead because yeah. interestingly, the vehicle that people were so sure they had to buy at the market's peak suddenly becomes a financial problem they don't want to deal with when they figure out there's no good way out of it. Reports are exceeding the numbers at the height of the recession back in 2009-2010. Negative equity or the amount that a debt exceeds a vehicle's value has ballooned in recent years with some consumers stepping into car deals trying to trade out of a vehicle that's in the neighborhood of $10,000 underwater. I personally remember a deal where an unfortunate couple brought in a car that was 8,000 underwater mm. and they still had years left to pay on it. Yeah. It's pretty sad to see because being buried in a car financially is a vicious cycle for anyone to try dig out of. As vehicle prices have risen and overall inflation remains elevated, consumers are increasingly starting in higher than average LTV positions to afford used vehicles. Satyan Merchant, a senior vice president at TransUnion and its auto business lead said in a statement. Vehicle values are expected to decline even further in the balance of 2023, according to a report. That's a red flag for lenders. Given the possibility that accelerated depreciation will result in negative existing LTVs for longer periods, this will be especially important for lenders to monitor, Merchant said. There are things you can do to combat negative equity, but to fight it, you first must understand what the root causes are. There are several contributors. First, there's the purchase price that's higher than it should be. You paid too much. The bottom line is negotiate better. Secondly, there's a problem with not putting enough cash down on the vehicle. Also, if you didn't pay the tax title and license fees out of your own pocket as a bare minimum, you have only yourself to blame for negative equity here. You know, there is a way that you can do a little catch up. So if you think you didn't put enough cash down and you think you're behind on your loan, start adding extra money to your monthly payments yep. right now to help fix the problem. There's also the problem of depreciation, and that comes into play the moment your vehicle title transfers at a state level from the dealer to you, the car buyer. If you bought new, now it's classified as used, and the actual cash value takes its first big hit. The next contributor to negative equity are all the long-term financing deals that buyers are getting enticed into. 
Don't be that person who gets tricked into focusing on a monthly payment amount because you're going to get killed on a loan term that is just far too long for your own good. Yep. Another contributing factor to negative equity is a high interest rate that you paid on the loan. And as everyone should know, rates are at record highs right now. Two final contributors, don't let yourself get stuck paying tons of dealer fees. Those are nothing but price and profit patterns for the dealer. Don't leave thousands of dollars of fees on the table. Lastly, be very careful in the finance office with extra products. No banker has ever said, oh, you bought a big fat car, extended warranty, so now your car is worth more. <laughs> no product and no warranty or service agreement can improve the value of your vehicle, but they sure can make your loan balance a lot fatter. A lot fatter. Yeah. In the last several years, car shoppers grew accustomed to paying more than MSRP or the manufacturer's suggested retail price. Remember the market adjustments? Oh, yeah. Consumers watched with dismay as car prices rose steadily, seemingly with no end in sight. It left many car shoppers scratching their heads. And the question we and others field from consumers the most is, when will new car prices drop? Kelly Blue Book has published some market data that reveals where things are at right now. Here are the KBB quick facts about car prices. In May 2023, average new car transactions were about 25% higher than the same month three years ago during the pandemic shutdown. So that tells you how much prices actually went up in the last three years and how far they have to go to get back in line. That said, average transaction prices are below MSRP. Electric car prices, those pesky EVs that some people believe are being crammed down our throats, are actually down more than $9,000 from a year ago. Manufacturer incentives have gone up to an average of $1,914, their highest level in a year. And as of right now, you can easily find a Jeep, Infiniti, Ram, or Jaguar. It's tougher to find a Toyota, Honda, Lexus, or Kia, but that is a problem that is steadily correcting itself. Now, we can tell you that average transaction prices fell below MSRP for the third time in two years. On its face, that seems like good news. However, car prices increased exponentially in the last three years, and a recovery to more normal levels isn't something we've seen happen yet. For that reason, we've dedicated a lot of content on this channel toward helping you navigate car buying. So if you're in the market to purchase a vehicle, you'd be better equipped with the best information we have access to from all of our sources. Now, while this chart shows a peak near 50,000, it closed the month at 48,528. And with more information on specific categories of cars, here's some vehicle pricing breakdown as provided by KBB. Luxury vehicle prices, the average transaction price was 64,396 for luxury vehicles. This trend continued in May. Luxury vehicles make up 18% of the total vehicle sales. Data shows that high-end luxury cars and luxury full-size SUVs declined in price while luxury cars and full-size SUVs saw average transaction price increases of as much as 3.3%. Non-luxury vehicle prices in May, car buyers paid an average transaction price of 44960 for non-luxury vehicles. Electric car prices, the average transaction for a new electric car is down more than 9000 from a year ago or 55488 Let's take a look at the contributing factors to new car pricing. They are inventory availability, manufacturer incentives, dealer discounts, and values offered on potential trade-ins. All four of those factors faced major disruptions in the last several years. Yes, they did. The microchip shortage was particularly impactful without crucial microchips, which control everything from engine timing to navigation systems. Automakers couldn't build cars as fast as they wanted. Right. This chart from Cox Automotive offers a look at where every manufacturer is at the moment in recovering their inventory levels. So while we see the nation's average among all car makers are approximately 55 days, some of you may be wondering why specific manufacturer prices are coming down more than others. This chart tells the story. There's Toyota sitting at the bottom between 20 and 30 day supply. And we see Jeep at the other end with more than 150 day supply. Wow. Pretty big difference. Now, if you wondered why Ram trucks have the highest incentives on them of all trucks in the market, they are sitting over a 110 day supply and desperately need to move trucks. Well, friends, we are just mere days away from launching our first homework guy assisted hassle free new car buying process, and it is most likely to start with Toyota in the state of Florida. On the other side of the country, California is also an early state likely to go live too. If you jumped on our notification wait list, don't be surprised when I call you and say, Hello, my friend, this is the homework guy. We are now ready to help you buy a new car. By the way, it's not too late to get on the list. Find the link in the description box down below the video or visit our website, thehomeworkguy.com to find it. As always, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications and give this video a like if you appreciate what we do here for you. 
right here courtesy of the Homework Guide team in our show. It's where you'll always find the most dependable tips and helpful information to assist you with finding an enjoyable car buying experience in today's car market. And we so appreciate the trust and confidence that thousands of you have shown us by getting on the notification list for the new hassle-free car buyers process. If you're new here, we invite you to join our huge YouTube family. If you've just recently joined us as a subscriber, we thank you, appreciate you, and welcome you aboard. Also, thanks to our many faithful followers who just keep coming back and to all of our longtime subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. The Homework Guy team is serving truth and justice in the car business and always will. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.